On April 7, 1913, Jensen gathered 20 friends for a luncheon at the Chicago City Club to discuss a conservation policy for protecting tracts of Illinois landscape with historic and scenic value. The outcome of this meeting was the formation of the Friends of Our Native Landscape, a society dedicated to securing and preserving examples of the native landscape types that existed at the advent of white man, of the white man, which are fast vanishing before the encroachment of industry. Jensen determined that there would be four meetings per year, the fireside meeting on the third Tuesday in January for conducting annual business, the pilgrimage to the crabapple blossom on a Saturday in May, the meeting to the full leaf at sundown on the second Saturday in June, and the meeting to the fallen leaf on an autumn Sunday to be held at the Indiana Dunes. The meeting to the full leaf was to be held at a different location each year, preferably at a place worthy of becoming a park. It was at this meeting that Jensen wanted a mass to be performed because he felt a dramatic presentation would have a great impact on creating sentiment for preserving these sites. This is Jensen's description of how the mass came into being. I had spoken to my friend Hamlin Garland about writing the mass, and he promised to do so. May was fast approaching its end, and the second Saturday in June was not far off. And I had to leave for Amherst, Massachusetts to lecture. On my return, I met Garland at the Cliff Dwellers Club and asked him for the mass. He answered that it had not been written, and he was not going to write it. He said that, it would that if I would change the place of the meeting to Palos Park, we could get an audience of 5,000 people, he would then write it. <laughs> at another table sat Candace Sawyer Goodman, eating lunch. I asked if he could see me before we left. We met, and I told him what I wanted and explained the purpose of the mass to him. His answer was, I don't know if I can write it. If I can, you'll have it on Thursday. <laughs> this was Monday. I called on Thursday and received the mask with the agreement that it was to belong to the Friends of Our Native Landscape and would never be commercialized. It was perhaps the best thing Kenneth ever wrote, and no finer plea for the preservation of a native landscape has ever been made. This is a description of the first performance of the mask written in the, in the Friends of Our Native Landscape 1914 yearbook. On Saturday, June 14, 1913, the first outdoor meeting of the society was held near Oregon, Illinois, in the only white pine forest in Illinois. About 200 members and their friends went up by train from Chicago and were met in the grove by a few others who had motored over from neighboring places. Luncheon was served, walks were taken to the grove and surrounding country, and then the party listened to speeches by prominent people from neighboring towns. Later in the afternoon, the people were reassembled in a glade beside a little stream where Mr. Nicholas Bacall Lindsay, who had come up from Springfield for the occasion, recited his poem, Hawk of the Rocks, after which a mass, written especially for the occasion by Mr. Kenneth Sawyer Goodman, was given. A little stream separated the audience from the stage, which was a projecting rock in front of a small grove of white pines. The weather was perfect and the scene beautiful, so the effect was very charming. Thereafter, the performing of the mass became a kind of ritual. Popular demand brought many invitations each year, but only one could be accepted. Once a place was chosen, the local townspeople took care of the arrangements and publicity, often attracting a crowd of 1,000 or more. At Peoria, Illinois, there were 2,500 in attendance, a little more than here. <laughs> <laughs> the sites were sometimes in Wisconsin or Michigan, and the players were always accompanied by, on a trek by a party group of 60 to 100 members of the Friends to travel by special rail coach until automobiles became common. At some point, the mass became, began to be called the beauty of the wild. It was not Goodman's title. In fact, he apparently never saw a performance. He died five years after it was written in the great influenza epidemic. It is believed that the title was first used in Holy Hill, Wisconsin, when a local publicity chairman felt the name was needed and suggested the beauty of the wild. It was used consistently thereafter by the friends, but in conversation, always simply the mass. The last Friends of Our Native Landscape performance of the mass took place in 1940 with Governor Frank Loudon's Mississippi Farm near Oregon, Illinois, not far from the Grove of White Pipe, where it had first been performed 27 years earlier. Introduce Mark from Dorshay and the group. Thank you all for coming to this beautiful place on a very magical and special day. 
Um, my name is Mark Mady, and I'm from Jackson Court, and I'm introducing the people and players of George Shakespeare. So this is Thor Thorson from Allison Bay. <laughs> Hi, Sturgeon Bay. Anna Mae Meyer from Fish Creek. Our director was Amy Ludwigson from Bailey's Harbor. So thank you. dying sun, my faith hath called me. I turn my face to the bloody rim of the world. My people are fled before me. I know not whither. I, too, must go. I have left my lodge and the council place of my fathers. The scarlet hunting in the wells of silver water, the ghostly sands, and the glimmering groves of birches. I go as a wild thing goes before the hunter into the night. My heart was strong in the path of the drifting arrow, hardened as splint with the throbbing drums of war, hot and proud the aching thirst of slaughter. It is melted now. Farewell, and peace, child of the silent play. Peace and deep rest, O brother of rock and stream. This pain of parting gives thee soul at last. <clears throat> I was alone with hate and bitterness, silence and death. Oh, wonder of the woods. A voice more kind than rain on ripening corn, like summer. Soft with hints of endless singing and glimpses of cool groves and running water. Sweetened with the breath of pine from dusky hills. In the blue night, a voice I seem to know and do not know bids me farewell. I stood beside thee at thine hour of birth. My wine hath flamed through every fine blue vein to set thee singing, dancing, feasting, loving. And yet thou knowest me not. Unmindful child, thy petals drip my blood in moonlight pools. Thy torches gild me in the starless dark. I breathe upon thee from the quivering leaves of April nights. Who are thou? I am she, whom men call ageless beauty of the wild. A god most worshipful. And still, unworshipped. <coughs> but I am poor, I cannot bring thee gifts. I go as driven leaves before a storm, I know not whither. I am hunted hence. Thy day hath harmed me not. Alas, I feel its passing an omen of ill hours. For on the track of every hunted thing follow the hunters. Them I fear. The air is sick with treading of unnumbered feet. Hail and farewell. So thou art gone, half mindful of my thanks, and I must face thy foes. And the marching moons that threaten swift despoilment. Hark, who comes? I know not where I am. The trail seems lost. Greeting, and welcome to my secret house, white pilgrim of the sunrise. Who art thou? Men call me ageless beauty of wild things. What dost thou lack? Speak out or let me pass. Friendship and peace, <clears throat> thy strength to guard my right. A little kindliness, a little thought of me and mine. 
What women's talk is this? <laughs> of kindliness and right. What right has thou or I or any man, save weight of hand, cunning in tracking beasts, swiftness of foot, courage to face encounter, strength to bear hardship and toil? Out of my path, I tell thee, my axe must clear an ever-widening trail for them that follow me. They press me close, and I must hasten, lest they tread me down and rob me of the spoils I wrest from you. But thou and I might dwell in friendliness. These woods are mine by ancient right. I offer silence and beauty, peace and leafy shade, unfettered days and nights of dreamless sleep. All this and the cool blessing of large stars. Nothing I cannot snatch despite thy will. Nothing I have not taken a hundred times. Nothing I will not break to suit my needs, trample and mar in strip, if so I must, to wring my garden from it. I shall kill thy beast to clothe me, and thy trees shall fall to build my cabin. Let me pass, I say, for they that follow me are pitiless, less strong than I. But men of swifter thought and larger greed, and I must take my share before they come. Give way and let me pass. Gone, and the days go with him, weeks and months, rounding to years that fly like driven rain. I feel my dwindling kingdom slip away under axe and plow. Yet there is hope that some who follow will be kindlier and grant me space to dwell in. Hush, they come. Less than 40 years ago, the state of Wisconsin was all wilderness. Just one damned aching nothing. <laughs> now the only thing we need is capital, patience, and grit. I'll bet a good cigar you'll see cities sprouting up like toadstools in 20 years. A railroad here and there will do the trick. Just open up the state from end to end. There's coal, water power. Once get the timber cleared, and the roads put through, and everything in cultivation, why, there's millions in it for a chap like me. Greetings, and peace be with thee. Art thou come to rest upon this dappled couch of leaves, to light a pleasant fire, to dream and talk? Thou art a friend, at least, I fear thee not. Thou hast no axe or gun. I bid thee welcome. <laughs> I thought we were alone. <laughs> I ask your friendship. Well, that's civil enough, but who the hell are you? You got a sort of weather-beaten look, <laughs> as if you worked on a farm. <laughs> well, what's your name? Men call me Deathless Beauty of the Woods, a god most worshipful, and still unworshipped, a friendless god. Well, what do you want with us? Friendship and peace. Thy wit to guard my shrine against the closing circle of tilled fields. A little friendliness, a little thought is all I ask. Now that's a rummy speech. What's kindliness and peace and beauty? Words. Just words. Why don't you get to work and stake a homestead? <clears throat> Talk of rights. What right of you or I or any man but just our own horse sense and dollar-getting wits? Yeah, clear out. We haven't time to waste on such as you. But thou and I might dwell in friendliness. These woods are still untouched. I offer thee silence and shadow, scent of balsam bough, unfeathered days and nights of dreamless sleep. All this and the cool blessing of high stars. You offer nothing that I care to buy. Nothing I can squeeze a dollar out of. Nothing that's worth a damn to progress. Nothing of any marketable value. Let me pass. I haven't time for your foolish talk. We're here to work. 
Town sites over yonder. First come, first serve. Out of my way. Will no one pity me? I feel the years closing upon me with their bands of steel. I'm ringed about with cities scarred with roads. And at the dawn of this new century, behold, myself, a desecrated thing. O oh, ageless beauty of the wilderness, O oh, deathless beauty that was Wisconsin, where wilt thou be in half a score of years? So, here I find thee, surprised. Be not afraid. Look in my face. I have grown used to fear. Who art thou? Hast thou come at last to drive me from this, the sweetest of my scattered haunts, the few poor places that I call my own, with bands of brawling workmen at thine heels, to make an end of me forever? Nay, 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 I come, I, I come to taste the blessing of thy call. For in the cities, some remember thee with thankful hearts and band themselves together, that thou mayst have some worship still. O oh, beauty of the wild, my friends and I have brought sweet music and pledge and play it protection for thy home, goodwill and cheer. So pick up your burden, my friends. Give me your voice, that I may light the fire. I pledge thee, shall leave the flame. 